Hey guys, welcome to Ace of Space Model Works. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions from people about how I do my shipping. So I just thought I would pop here and uh, create a video for you guys about uh, chipping, two layer chipping, and then eventually to three layer chipping like I kind of did on the PV1 Ventura build. Um, I've been doing a lot of tests recently, getting ready for my next build. So this is a test piece that I chipped up. You see here, it's a little little shiny and glossy because I, I have a gloss coat on it because I'm gonna do some weathering on it eventually. Um, obviously, this is very very over chipped um, and definitely uh, not gonna chip anything like this anytime soon. Um, but basically, I'll show you how to get uh, this piece of bare plastic um, down to look in like this. So we'll go over some just kind of base coating, some silver, uh, laying down some chipping fluid and then uh, going through the process we get to basically this end result right here. So that's what we'll work on uh, today. All right, so this is just a uh, piece of a PC-6 uh, wing that uh, has been sitting in kind of the pile of extra parts and stuff I'm never gonna get to. And the only thing I've done to this, I've given it a sand down because it had some texture on it. And then I uh, put in some rivets of no you know particular scheme or anything they're just kind of on there to give it some um texture and to you know liven it up a little bit as i work on it and have some reference points for you know when i practice chipping maybe i want to chip along a line of rivets and that kind of stuff so um basically what we're gonna take here is we're gonna prime it first and we're gonna be using some mrp uh, fine surface primer black which is mrp 85 for this, and that's gonna be sprayed with my uh, PS290 uh, airbrush. So let me get this ready and then we'll start spraying. Okay, got the PS290 loaded up with uh, some fine surface primer from uh, MRP. Obviously you can use whatever primer you like and you don't have to use black. You can use whatever color you want. The process will be pretty much the same, but um, Mine's gonna be how I do chipping with black basing. So this is shooting at about 15 PSI right now. There's a little bit of a whistle to it. Airbrush is not completely clean. Dust in here, I normally have my fan on, but it makes so much noise that uh, you wouldn't be able to hear me on the camera. So I'm just gonna let that set up for a couple minutes and then we'll go shoot some silver. Okay, for uh, the silver part, we're gonna be using some Alclad 2 Aluminum 101. And I'll be shooting this out of my Iowata uh, HPCS at about 12 to 15 PSI. And all I'm going to do is focus on some access panels, um, you know, little circle dupes here. And I'm going to pretend that this is the walkway of the wing. So I'll concentrate a little bit more over here. This should be enough for what I want to show here. Obviously, I'm not going to do the entire thing, but you could uh, spray the entire piece in silver and then, you know, spray on your chipping fluid over the entire piece. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select some parts. So I'm going to focus on what I'm calling the wing root of the plane here, uh, some of these uh, access panels that I picked out here, and then, uh, you know, do some work along this panel line and some stuff like that. Um, so just for the sake of demo purposes, that's what I'm going to do on this, this wing for now. All right. We're going to move on to some uh, chipping fluid. Okay, I changed the camera angle because I just realized that uh, all this stuff I just shot beforehand, you probably couldn't see because I'm airbrushing with my right hand. I was probably blocking the subject. But anyways, um, 
I've loaded up the airbrush uh, with some AK Interactive Worn Effects Fluid. Um, I prefer this over their chipping effects or their heavy chipping effects. I just like the way it works a little bit more. Um, you tend to have to work at it and, and it comes off in smaller parts. Um, so just my preference, you can use any chipping fluid that you like. Um, the big thing is you need, like what I've learned with this stuff is for the effect I want, I spray two coats and I, I uh, use a hair dryer in between each coat to dry it off. Um, so that's what I found out that works best for me is two coats of worn effects with um, a hit with the uh, hair dryer in between. Also spraying this with the uh, PS290 and I'm just focusing on the parts that I hit in silver. You don't want to go too heavy with this stuff. Once it starts to beat up on you, uh, you've gone a little bit too heavy. So It's also very hard to see where you're spraying with this stuff on the silver. A little bit too heavy on that part right there. Okay, that's all coated, so now I'm gonna go hit it with the hair dryer. I'll be right back. Okay, so for the first color, I'm gonna use MRP Zinc Chromate Primer, which is MRP 129. That's this yellowy color that you see on a lot of uh, World War II aircrafts as a uh, primer. You'll see it in the wheel wells and stuff like that. So I'm gonna lay down a coat on the wing with that. So I'm just gonna hit uh, the areas that I painted silver. I'm gonna avoid the parts that are black based. Okay, so you see I laid down the zinc chromate and the access panels I plan on chip here and here. And then, like I said, I'm planning, I'm pretending that this is the, the walkway next to a cockpit. So it's not as heavily covered in here, but I went my way back because I'm planning on this being pretty heavily chipped and then fading off in the middle and then some access panels and some rivets along here. So that's your second coverage coat uh, with the zinc. Uh, chromate. So now is we will start to chip this layer. Okay, and then so for the chipping process, you just need some water. So I have a little uh, pot of water there. And then um, I have an assortment of chipping brushes that I use. Some of them are just normal old brushes. Some of them are brushes I've chopped up quite a bit. So they're kind of um, stiffer at the, the tip, so they're good at really scrubbing things. Some of them are a, a more type of abrasive brush. Um, this is a Princeton, what they call a fix-it brush, which it's almost similar to um, a carbon fiber pencil brush. Um, it's very, it's a little bit softer than that, it's not as aggressive. Um, so basically these are just some brushes that I customized to be aggressive at shipping. Um, so the big thing is first, what I've learned since I'm using MRP, MRP is a little resistant to the, the chipping process because it's just a little bit you know, more durable. So you really have to kind of get um, the water going so it can kind of work its way into that coat that we want to chip. So I'm just going to lay a coat of water over everything I've done so far just to start to soak it in a little bit. And just let it kind of get saturated a little bit.
This is just a little flat brush that I'm using to spread the water around. So then I'm going to use this stip. This is a very stiff deer foot stippler that I use just for chipping. It's very, very rough. So I'm just going to start a kind of stippling at these areas and start, okay, so we're, we're, we're starting to see some stuff come out here. So I'm just going to kind of be random with it and chip around and let this kind of chew at it a little bit. scrub every now and then. So you can definitely see, it might be hard to see on camera, but it's starting to pick up the paint a little bit around this panel line. Get some more water going here. Might be helpful if I zoomed in a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Get this all framed up here. X marks the spot. Okay, back to that. Went a little bit too heavy handed there. I just completely chipped out that access panel, which is okay. We can fix that later. But once I know that I'm starting to get some movement on it, I'll go to a, a lighter brush. I have this very cut down brush. I don't know if that's gonna focus in. But basically this is just an old uh, flat brush that I cut almost all the way down to the, to the neck. This is good for kind of laying out a line. Since it's so stiff. It's a good workout. So I'm just kind of working my way around some panel lines here, being light around some some rivets. I'll stay away from that part. It was too heavy there. So yeah, it's just at this point you're just kind of picking out, getting the chips going, and then you're going to start to um, shape them how you, you want them to look. Um, you know, obviously the primer coat, you don't want too much, or you know, it depends on the look you're going for. So I'm just trying to leave a little bit of primer in certain spots, but remaining, keeping the, uh, the silver base as kind of the, the primary focus. Another good tool is these brass toothpicks or um, a pin and a pin vise. These are great for just kind of working along rivets. 
So on this particular piece, I have um, recessed rivets, not rays. So I can kind of poke at them and then come in with this kind of stubby brush and work along them a little bit. Just got to be careful when you use the pins that you don't go too deep because then you go straight into the, the black coat of primer if you're a little bit heavy handed. So I can definitely tell in this spot right here, um, remember when I was spraying the, the uh, shipping fluid, I said I went a little bit too heavy. I can tell it's too heavy because it's just it's coming right off, which isn't bad, but it's not what I intended for it to do. So it's kind of drying a little bit, so we want to keep adding some water. It's also good to use the, the lighter brush to do some chipping as well, instead of all the aggressive brushes. All right, so I'm gonna work on this a little bit longer and I'll come back when I'm done chipping the primer layer. Okay, so I got this kind of chipped out. There's some, some nice stuff going on in here. Um, I like how I worked the fuel caps here, or whatever would be fuel caps, and the, uh, the wing root in here is pretty heavily worn. Um, so there's some good to tones going on, some textures going on, some decent chips. Um, so at this point, since, you know, I kind of have a horrible memory is I tend to take a picture of this with my phone. So I know where there's some like nice spots that I want to kind of bring out, uh, just so I remember where I, when I do the next layer of chipping. Um, so, uh, because the next part is, is going to be a coat of, uh, clear gloss to seal everything in. Um, so that way this is locked in and then we're gonna go another coat of chipping fluid. But if you just wanted to do one layer of chipping, you could stop here and then seal everything in just to, so that the chipping fluid doesn't activate anymore and you your wings all chipped. For three layer chipping, obviously we're gonna go into one more layer. So we have to repeat basically the process that we had done prior to this. So I'm gonna seal this in um, with a coat of X22 uh, from Tamiya. Okay, so now we're just using some Tamiya X22 Clear, and it's thinned with Mr. Level, uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner, and I've thinned it about 60-40 uh, thinner to paint, or thinner to clear. And this is gonna be a pretty uh, wet coat. Make sure uh, before you go and do this part that uh, you got all the water and it's uh, dry, um, otherwise you have some problems. Okay, doke. So that's got a nice wet coat and a couple other coats on top. And now we're just going to let this set for about uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes uh, to let it really go off before we do the next step. So if you wanted to, instead of using a gloss, you could use a semi-gloss or a matte. I tend to use a gloss surface for this phase because I find that the 
the next layer that's gonna go on top of it will just chip a little bit better. This is kind of how it works out for me. Um, so it just, you know, doesn't have as much grip onto the other paint. So that's why I go with a gloss coat, but you can, you get some pretty cool effects if you decide to go with, you know, a matte coat or a semi-matte coat on the next phase of paint. Um, it will tend to grab a little bit more and do some different things when it shifts. But I personally like to use gloss. Okay, so now to continue on, like I said, so now if you're doing three layer chipping, you're moving on, we're back to another coat of the worn effects or your chipping fluid or your hairspray. So same thing as we did before, we want to hit uh, those spots that we focused our chipping on. And now it's even harder to tell where you sprayed the chipping spray because you're working on a gloss surface in my situation. I'm a little bit lighter handed this time than I was last time. I might have to do two and a half coats on this because I think I kind of did a coat a little heavy. So I'm going to go hit this with the uh, hair dryer and I'll do the other couple coats and I'll come back when, I'm, when it's all done. Okay, we got two coats of the chipping fluid sprayed down, hit with the hair dryer in between. Now we're going to lay on uh, another black base coat to unify the surface so we can get some modulation in our color. So I'm just using some MRP NATO black for this pass. So you don't have to go for a complete coverage, it's just kind of unified the surface over the top of the chipping and the silver layer. All right, so the next part that we're gonna do here, something going on the airbrush here. But anyways, uh, the next part that we're gonna do here is now we're gonna lay the base colors down uh, that we want over the top. So um, I don't know what colors I'm gonna pick yet. I guess I'll pick that uh, while I'm cleaning out the airbrush because it's making some hissy noises when it's spraying. So I think it definitely needs a little bit of a clear out. Uh, but I'm not gonna be using this one anyway, so maybe I'll wait a little bit. Um, but I'll come back with some colors. We'll do some modeling and some stencil work and then we'll work our way up to some type of color and then we'll do some chipping again. Okay, so I'm just going to pick, I just put some random colors to work at the end result being this U.S. Navy blue gray M, sorry, M485 until 1942 blue gray. So with that, I'm going to model with some eggplant dark gray some gunship gray, and for the highlight, some haze gray. So I'm gonna model those on with a combination of some Ushi uh, stencils and then some masterpiece model stencils as well. So let me get loaded up here and I'll start the process. Okay, so first up we have eggplant dark gray MRP 205. Um, I'm gonna do mostly stencils with this. Normally when I do a paint job, I probably freehand and stencil, but since we're just kind of working through this, I'm just going to do mostly stencils. Let's get started with this one here.
Okay, so there's a brief model coat with the eggplant dark gray. Moving on to the next color. Okay, up next is gunship gray. Okay, so there's the model coat on with the gunship gray. Coming along. Moving on to the next color. Okay, next color is haze gray, MRP 39. Okay, model coat with the haze gray. Now we'll go with the blank coat of the blue gray. Okay, so for the blank coat, we have the blue gray uh, M485 from 1942 by the US Navy. This is being cut with uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner uh, about 50 50. We want it to be light. We're going to go in light coats to maintain the uh, black basing and the model coat. Close. 
little bit and one more pass, I guess. chill for a moment well before I handle it it's very MLT heavy so you risk putting a fingerprint in if you move it right now so I'll come back in a couple minutes okay so we have our blend coat of the uh, blue gray done uh, it has some pretty good um, tonal variety in it from my viewpoint I don't know how well camera's picking up with all my lights and there's some reflections on it and stuff but um, I'm happy with that and then again it's a sample piece that we're chipping so uh, we're gonna move on to the next part here so the next part obviously we just did that um, we have added our blend coat now we can go chip again so we're back to our thing of water and all of our implements of chipping destruction so we got all my brushes and pins and toothpicks and stuff situate this in the way I remember it so I, I forgot to take a picture even though I told you I took a picture of what I usually chip so um, I'm gonna focus on those spots that I nailed I think it was all the way till about here in the middle these couple of uh, fuel tank or caps over here and then a couple things along here so um, we'll get our water out and once again now we have why we did everything in such thin layers is because MRP is resilient to the chipping. So it's a little bit tougher to chip. Now that we have a light primer coat, we have three layers of model coats and a blend coat, it's gonna take a little bit more water to penetrate through and start to loosen up and activate the hairspray. So same process as before. Lay a good coat of some water down over the part and the areas that you want to chip and let it saturate and soak in and do its thing while you're working on it. You also wanna make sure that while you're waiting for that last coat, make sure it fully dries. Um, when I was doing this sample piece the other night, I didn't wait for it to fully dry and I put a nasty fingerprint in the corner over here uh, because the blank coat wasn't completely set and I put my finger in it. So just word of warning. The good thing about this process is what I've learned uh, chipping stuff is after, you know, I could have laid this blend coat on top of the chipping fluid. I could probably still chip it, uh, you know, a week from today, you know, if it's perfectly done. Um, so I've chipped things up to a week after um, I laid that, that blend layer down. And all you got to do is add the water on um, and you can activate the, the chipping fluid or hairspray, whatever you're using again. Um, it is a little bit tougher to chip. Um, than it is, you know, right out of the, you know, the first couple minutes that it's been painted, but it is possible. So I think we got a decent thing, so we'll start kind of poking at it here. It needs another, another coat to really seal in, or sorry, soak in. Starting to get some chipping going on here with the heavy brush. Just a little bit. Once you get it going, once you get it started, it does a pretty good job of spreading around. Oh, there we go. There we go.
So yeah, the usual thing, start attacking it. I'll come back after I'm happy with my chipping. Okay, so there we are, all chipped up. So, um, there are a few errors here. I totally forgot where there were spots where I stopped the silver. So there's little specks of black primer showing through in a couple of parts, which you can easily touch up and then take care of later um, with either some, you know, silver, or you can just take some of the base color and um, blend it back in. But uh, it's hard to see, but you can get some of the silver, some of the zinc chromate is mixed in there. So you get some good variations. So that's the three color chipping. And notice the rivets, they really pop if you work them the correct way. So a good majority of this chipping was done with this um, Princeton number no. two fix it brush which has these, sorry, looks like that, these very stiff bristles, which you just wet them a little bit, dab it a little off, you kind of poke at it a little bit and get some, some very good work on the, uh, the rivets. So there it is, three layer chipping. Focus, come on here, buddy. There we go. So yeah, next you would go ahead and apply another uh, coat of either gloss or a semi-matte or whatever your next coat is. So if this was me, I'd be getting ready for, um, you know, uh, a layer of maybe, um, getting ready for decal, so this is smooth enough where I could just decal on top of it, or I do a layer of gloss, then decal, and then I seal it all in again. Um, you definitely want to seal this in before you do another coat of anything on top of it to risk um, reactivating the um, chipping fluid. So, you know, semi-gloss, gloss, seal it in, deactivate the, uh, the chipping fluid, and then you're ready to move on. But that looks pretty, pretty good to me, and hopefully, you know, you guys learned something about chipping here and my process of doing it while I black back blaze back black base take the foot out of my mouth uh, but yeah so there it is if you guys have any questions uh, about any processes um, or comments hit them up in the comment section or you can hit me up on uh, the instagrams at ace of spades model works and I'm more than happy to uh, answer your questions and straighten some things out if you're confused about anything so there it is. There's three layer chipping, my version of it. Um, thanks for watching. Hope this video uh, was enlightening. Hope you weren't, you know, my face and head didn't get too much in the way and you're actually able to see some of the process. So we'll see how it goes when we edit. <laughs> Take it easy. Adios.